So yes, I did it a year ago and today, almost one year later, or really about a year and a half later, I am more pleased now than ever. I absolutely love this airplane. So in this program, what I'm going to do is show you my journey through the first year of airplane ownership, what I have done to it, the add-ons that I've made, the problems that I've had, what this costs, and most importantly, is it all worth it? Hi, I'm Ted Greenfield with a message for all you private pilots out there. You gotta make amazing landings. If you don't make amazing landings, well, there's something wrong with you. I still feel this was a wonderful decision and I have no regrets. I bought this airplane when I had about 220 hours of flight time and now, January of 2020, I have about 440 and I have my instrument rating. The biggest takeaway is this plane is mine. I can go anywhere, anytime I want and I never have to have a conversation with anybody about it. You cannot put a price on that. The costs are, well, the costs overall are no more than owning a 35 to a 40 foot powerboat. And it's just about the same, from maintenance to insurance to keeping it somewhere, and I'll get into all that later. But really, if you've had a boat, it's about the same costs. Now, since you're not a Star Trek fan, um, there's this down there, I think there's a school of manatee. <laughs> You like manatees, don't you? Love manatees. All right. So when I bought this plane, it really didn't have much. It was a strictly VFR aircraft, and honestly, not much worked on it as far as instruments or the avionics. It was safe, but it was in need of several major upgrades, which my eyes were fully open to when I bought it. So let's go over the upgrades. The upgrades I made to the plane were two G5s, one reconditioned KX-155, a Garmin 335 ADS-B transponder, a Garmin 355 GPS, and a new plastic panel for the dash. Yes, this was expensive. And it was a smart decision. Number one for safety. You cannot put a price on safety. You never want to walk away, and hopefully walk away, from an airplane event being glad you saved a few bucks. That is foolish thinking. And you can't fly an airplane around with crappy equipment that may fail at any time. As a pilot, new or old, you also need your instrument rating, so you need good equipment. Yes, I could have bought a used 430 in there, but when I really sat and thought about it, I didn't want 20-year-old technology in my airplane. I wanted good equipment, and I didn't want financial decisions to drive safety. Now, a word on this. People have said, oh, you'll never get your money out of this. You'll never get your money out of the airplane. But that is not the goal. Your goal is safe, purposeful flight. And an airplane is not a financial decision. And you can't let financial matters affect safety. You have to have good, reliable equipment. So I threw out the you'll never get your money out of it argument right from the start. And to be honest, I don't really care. I'm not in this for financial gain or to make dollar savings purchases. Well, really, I'm in this to become an excellent IFR pilot. So you need to have good, reliable equipment on your airplane. And that's what I decided to do right from the start. And I am so glad. I have grown as a pilot by making these upgrades and learning more through the process. So let's talk about numbers. What did this cost? Grand total, the avionics upgrades in my Cardinal were about $25,000. That is the master figure for everything. The peace of mind is worth about $200,000. That's a bargain if you ask me. So what's different? Let's take a look at the plane. The cockpit is much cleaner now, and it's actually pleasant to look at. I don't have a Civil War era instrument, and they all work. And my old instruments are stacked up on my desk in my office and are a great conversation piece. And that's where they belong, considering they all were about 50 years old. I love the two new G5s and the new Garmin GPS. And as I get more night hours, I don't have to worry about not seeing anything because everything's lit up. Also, 
It is my goal to become as fluent as possible with the Garmin 355. I really want to master that and know it very well so that when I'm in the dark and when I'm in the clouds, I can just program in, pull up an approach, and not even think about it. Now, maintenance. Maintenance has been a bit of an issue, but again, what plane isn't? Especially what 50-year-old plane isn't? So I have replaced the brakes, Fix the flaps. You can also see the episode flaps won't retract. Replace one of the magnetos. You can see the program at magneto fail. And I had a rather expensive annual. One of the cylinders was leaking oil pretty bad and there were a bunch of little things. But again, the peace of mind knowing that it is all fixed is really nice to have. And we're at K-pop 176, 176. And we're down. So let's follow this down. Flight slope is active. There it is. All right. And we're at 133. We're going to keep our speed up for this guy. We won't pass 135. Uh, when we get uh, one mile from the runway, I'll cut it back. Yankee traffic will be home position. Alert Repeat that, please. Two one for Yankee. I didn't hear what he said. One four Yankee, continue. Trap will be home position. Alir Jet. Continue two to one for Yankee. November zero November Juliet runway one eight. Line up and wait. Traffic is assessed on a three mile final. Right, line up and wait. Runway one eight seven zero November Juliet. Clear for takeoff one eight seven zero November Juliet. Or one four Yankee runway one eight. Clear for the option. One eight. Clear for the option. We're going to be a full stop. Two to one for Yankee. Roger. Clear line runway 18. Contrary terms, the Learjet is departing now. Learjet is departing. We have him inside. Uh, we may have to break off. No, oh, you're good. Are you sure? You are not going to catch him. <laughs> good. I know you think. <laughs> Altogether, it's really not anything more than owning a boat. So let's look at what I have. I have a fully IFR capable, nice airplane that is in perfectly good working order. And that doesn't mean that things aren't gonna break. Of course things are gonna break. It's gonna be an airplane. But I don't have any more guesswork. Now, my fuel burn has stayed the same. I now run between 25 and 2700 RPM and she burns about eight gallons an hour, which is really good, but she is slow. Now, I do like the fuel flow and the slow fuel burn because it's economical, but this is getting old kind of going around everywhere at 120 to 130 miles an hour is taking a little bit of time because I do want to get places. I fly between Washington DC and St. Petersburg, Florida a lot, which is a long way in this little plane, but I'm learning, I am having fun, and I'm becoming a better pilot. When I upgrade to a new airplane, I'm gonna love the speed, but I'm really gonna miss that eight gallon an hour fuel burn. In the first program, I was about 240 hours, and like I said before, a year later, I'm at 440 hours and I have an instrument rating. I'm planning to get my commercial rating in this airplane as well. So let's look at this. Has this been a good purchase and a good experience? Absolutely. Have I grown as a pilot from this? Absolutely. And I am a better pilot. Am I happy I bought the airplane? Absolutely. And most importantly, would I recommend you buying an airplane? Absolutely, yes, buy the airplane. Just go ahead, buy your airplane, become a great pilot. Owning your own airplane is something that I can't even begin to describe to tell you about. You'll just have to do it and you can write me about it later. Leave your comments below, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you like, let me know what you didn't like, hit like and we will see you soon. Thanks for watching.